What is up you guys, I hope you all done well. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're returning to the Air Like series where we break down the styles of famous photographers, YouTubers and creators. The style that we're gonna break down today is Uri Segura. Now this look has been highly requested by many in my Spanish channel but I think you guys will enjoy it as well. So this is what we're gonna do. First of all, we're gonna jump into Instagram and check out his style break down what he does in the color grading department, if he lowers the exposure, if he adds more contrast, if he adds some tones in the shadows. And then having analyzed his style, we're gonna jump into Instagram and edit a photo with the analysis that we made, create a preset out of it, and maybe edit some photos to see how it performs. And sometimes we create little variants on the style depending on the complexity of his look. So let's not waste any more time and let's jump into his style on Instagram. So creators, this is Uri Segura's profile on Instagram, Uri Segura M, if you wanna go and follow him. And he's a Spanish photographer from Barcelona. And as you can see, his style is very nice. It's very appealing to the eyes because, well, it combines warm tones and cold tones. Now, immediately when I see his feed, I think of Gary King's profile because it has loads of similarities. Everything from the time of day that he shoots, regularly at sundown or at golden hour, and also the tones that he applies into the skin tones and into the highlights. Just as a side note, let's do a little comparison between the two styles. Look at this portrait from Uri Segura and look at the highlights, how they're dimmed down. We have so much information in the sky and in the skin tones. It's shot at golden hour or at sunset. Also, we can see that, well, the skin tones are a bit orangey, more orangey than normal. Now let's look at the comparison from Gar King. And this portrait is very similar in the way that it was shot, at the time of day it was shot. The highlights are also dimmed down, the skin tones are a bit more orangey. It's very similar. Then we have this macro shot of a pine needle with a water drop from Gar King. It's a beautiful shot. And then we have Uri Segura's version, which is basically identical. It's just incredible. I don't know if either of these guys knows each other or one of them is taking inspiration from the other, but well, you have to conclude that they're very similar, at least to my opinion eyes. Then look at this image from Bear King, look at the shadows with a blue tone, and then look at Uri Segura's version. <laughs> it's so similar guys, uh, the relation is undeniable. Okay, so enough of that comparison, let's go back to his feet. Now in general aspects, if we take a broader look, we can see that his feet has this warm tone to it. Yes, a lot of it is because most of his images are shot at sunset, which adds this warm cast into the sky and into all the parts of the image, but also because he adds a warm tone into the highlights. He normally shoots whether it be at sunset, golden hour, or an overcast day. And in overcast days, well, you normally don't see a warm sky. Um, and here, he adds that warm tone into the highlights, and then he does the direct opposite in the shadows. He adds a blue tone, which is a direct opposite of that warm tone, creating this color contrast or this complementing color in the image. Now, complementary colors is something that we've talked about in the camera calibration uh, video if you want to check it out it's linked up here but in essence what it's doing is creating this balance in the image it's similar to the teal and orange that's why that style is so appealing to the eye it's trying to replicate what we see in a sunset at the beach when we're looking at a sunset at the beach the horizon is dividing the warm tones the reds the oranges and the yellows at the top from the blue tones and the aqua tones at the bottom so these colors are direct opposites in the color wheel and they're yes very different from each other, but also they're complementing and balancing the colors out. So that's why that style is so appealing to the eye. And that's what he's doing right here in his image with a darker blue and then a yellow in the highlights. So most of these images have this color contrast that we're talking about, their lifestyle and travel photography. We don't see any, any images at rainy or snowy days or at midday where the shadows are very harsh. So let's jump into uh, specifics to break down the style. Okay, so let's start off with this portrait. Now, this portrait, we can see what we're talking about. Look at the shadows. The shadows have this blue, almost teal-like color in this beam, in the sweater over here, and also in the pyramid. Every dark part of the image has this blue tone. Then, the highlights, every bright part of the image, including the base of the pyramid, uh, the building at the back, and the sky, have this warm or yellowish tone added. So we have to keep that in mind. That we're gonna add this in the color grading part. Then we can see that the highlights are a bit dimmed down, so we have more information in the bright parts of the image, and then the shadows are a bit lowered, so we have more contrast or more of a punchy image. Another thing that we have to keep in mind is the skin tones. The skin tones are a bit more orange than usual. That, we're gonna do it in camera calibration. Next, we have this set of images of this campaign with Mercedes. Immediately, we can see the same results. The shadows have this blue tone, the highlights have this warm tone, and as you can see, the highlights are very dimmed down uh, so much that the sky is basically gray with that warm cast added. It should be blue, it should be brighter, it's completely dimmed down. So he's lowering the highlights in the basic corrections and in the tone curve. Then every other color in the image aside from the warm tones is 
very much desaturated including the blues including the greens in the background of the trees everything is a bit too desaturated now in this one where we can see the subject getting into the car we can see how he crushes the shadows there's no information in the jacket or is it a sweater or is it a blazer we don't see any detail or differentiation in dark parts of the image because he's lowering the shadows to make the image a lot more punchy yeah so this type of image this type of color grading with the blue shadows and the warm tones and the highlights i would consider to be his most dominant style at least in recent times we can see it again in this portrait in the Arc of Triumph and obviously you can see how the sky, this one is shot in an overcast day but the sky is also warm and we can see a lot of information in the clouds so he's lowering the highlights. Then in the Arc itself we can see that well all the bright parts of the Arc are yellow and the dark parts have this blue tint to it so this is basically his base style then if we move into the portraits which is an important part of his feet it's a similar style where we have that's those crushed blacks as you can see there's no information in the hair of the male model and then the highlights are dimmed down we can see it in the dress of the female model the skin tones are also orangey we have those warm tones in the highlighted parts but then in the shadows we don't have that blue tone so he's dimming down the blue color grading to make it a bit more natural and make it a bit more useful for portraiture in this set of images of madrid we can see it as well where we have basically the same edit warm tones in the highlights then every other color dimmed down and desaturated and then the shadows crushed but in this case they don't have any blues in them resulting in an image which isn't color balanced we have a majority of warm tones and therefore the entire image looks a bit more warm then in the next one as well we can see the skin tones as well orange no blues in the shadows and in essence this is a little variant on the main style that he has now let's jump into his preset and lot shop because here we have a little insight into what he does in the before and afters and remember if you want to support him this is his shop you can buy his presets and nuts directly from him but the purpose of my tutorials isn't to steal the styles but to use them as examples for you guys to learn how to analyze and break down styles and in particular how to color grade so here we have his presets in his shop and immediately we can see this is the base style he calls it golden we can see those blue tones in the shadows compared to the before then the highlights look at the comparison in the original image they were completely blown out and overexposed in the after we have them so dimmed down and no trace of blue in the sky skin tones are a lot more orange from the image captured and in essence this is his main style we have to keep that in mind this one is the one that we're going to start off replicating then he has this one which he calls creamy it this is the one that he uses for the portraits in essence it's the same style as the previous one with little alterations so the sky we can see that it's a bit more saturated in this case but also it's still dimmed down so we have lots of information in the highlights look at the dress of the model how in the original was you know, very white very normal and in the after it's completely dimmed down so he's still reducing the highlights and he's still crushing the blacks we can see that there's no information in the shadows uh, under the hair over here next to the ear and he's still crushing the blacks but notice that there's no blue tone in the shadows so this is the one he used, that he uses for portraits it still has the same skin tones it still has that same flattened highlights and those same crushed blacks but now it's more natural uh, more appealing to apply it into portraiture so in his shop you can find his six presets in this case we're not going to concentrate in more than three uh, here we have this one which he calls flat base the highlights are a lot more flat and dimmed down than in the previous presets but also the shadows are a lot more flat he's raising them opposite to the previous presets where he lowers them to make more contrast in this case the shadows have a lot more information as we can see in the detail in the ceiling in this detail in the dashboard and in the wheel now apart from being more flat the difference to the first preset is that in this case we don't see any blue tones in the shadows instead we see aquas or mints so here we have them it's a very nice style and i think we'll, i will have some fun trying to replicate this one okay guys so i think i have everything i need to replicate these three looks that i just mentioned so we're going to jump into lightroom and edit some photos but before that i'm going to remind you that these three presets are going to be added into the air like preset pack v2 alongside all the pieces that we create throughout this series so if you want to ch check it out and support me it's link up here also they're going to be added into the air like lot pack v2 so if you want to apply these looks into your videos as well you can check it out up here in my shop that's a great way you can support me and yeah enough of that let's jump into lightroom Okay, Chris, here I have a lot of images in this small collection just to try to replicate Uri Segura's style. Now, I have to say that most of these shots aren't shot at golden hour, at sunset, and are not shot in a similar manner because, well, I'm not that type of photographer. What we're going to concentrate in is the color grading. 
So let's select an image. In this case, I'm going to select this one, which I really like, and go to the Develop tab with D on your keyboard. Okay, so let's start off by creating the preset that has some blue tones in the shadows, the one that Uri calls as the golden. Now starting out, temperature, tint, exposure and contrast, these values, I don't like to tamper with them. These are the values that I'm going to use to adjust the preset to different photographs which are shot in different manners. For example, this image in particular is quite dark because I didn't bump up the ISO high enough. So what I'm going to do is just correct the exposure, but these value, this value that I'm going to introduce in the exposure, I'm not going to add it into the preset, so I have to keep that in mind. So this image is shot at sunset, but the light is evenly distributed because we're in the shadow of buildings in the middle of Rome. So we're not going to see the warm tones in the highlights just as much as in other photographs that we're going to edit today. So starting out, we don't want to go with a positive to the highlights because that will add more contrast or, and more blown out parts in the highlights. We want to do the opposite to achieve his style. So we'll go to the negatives. In this case, around the minus 30 or 32 is going to be perfect. Then the shadows, in this case, I'm going to lift them up, not too much so we have a flat image, but just enough so we have a bit more information in dark parts, around the 12%. Then the white control the brightest parts of the image, higher than the highlights, so I'm going to pull it down, or the minus 44, it's going to be perfect, or 45. And then the blacks, I'm just going to pull them up just a bit. Next, we're going to go to texture and clarity. Now, texture and clarity will basically add a bit more contrast and a bit more sharpness into the image. He does add some of it into his portraits in particular. So for example, texture, we don't want to go all the way to the plus 100 because well, the image looks quite unnatural and then we can see that noise starts to appear in our image, which is a defect of post edition. So what I'm going to do is just go around the plus 15 is going to be enough just to make the image a bit more sharp and a bit more punchy. Then the clarity, I also, I don't want to go to the extreme. Otherwise, the image is far too contrasty. We're going to go around the plus eight is going to be enough or plus seven, something like that. Next, we're going to skip vibrance and saturation and we're going to go down to the tone curve. Now, in the tone curve, we can do basically the same thing as in basic corrections. We could use it to correct our image and to control the exposure and contrast. I like to use it as a second layer of basic corrections. So here, I like to add my specific style. And in this case, Uy Segura's style. We want to go for those contrasty shadows and dim down whites and highlights. Now, if you want an in-depth tutorial of this tool or any of the tools that I'm going to be touching on today, you can always look them up on my channel. You can find them up here. Maybe I'll link it up here in the cards. The calibration, tone curve, color grading, all those tools that are up there in case you want to master those. So what I'm going to do is create a point in the shadows and a point in the midtones. Starting out, let's create that contrast in the shadow. So I'm going to pull it down below the diagonal and immediately you can see how those shadows are starting to get crushed around these lines. Then the midtones, I'm going to pull them down below the diagonal just a bit and also the whites. Now this shape will create more contrast in the shadows but also create brightest parts of our image a lot more dimmed down with a lot more information. So that's the purpose of this curve. Then the blacks, I'm just going to fade them up just a bit. Not too much, we don't want them to be completely grey and posterized. We want to go with a value around 4% in the output. Now with Y on our keyboard we can see the before and after and this is just the basic corrections and the exposure and we can see that yeah we have more contrast in the dark parts of the image and then the highlights as we can see have a lot more information are a bit more dimmed down this is what we were looking for okay now let's go to the color grading let's start off with camera calibration now this tool is available in lightroom classic and also lightroom desktop only you have to activate it but it's very powerful because you can alter the rgb in essence every single pixel on our image is composed from the rgb the red primary the blue primary and the green primary so let's start off by creating those skin tones now the problem is that with this image that we have over here we have very limited skin tones we have those only in the neck over here so what i'm gonna do is create this uh, the skin tones that we were looking for, the more orangey skin tones in another portrait. So I'm going to right click and copy these settings. I'm just going to select copy and then I'm going to go to another portrait that has more skin. <laughs> right here I have this photo of this group that was playing in Florence. So what I'm going to do is paste our settings from our previous image. As you can see basic corrections and tone curve have been applied but now I'm going to alter the skin tones so they're a bit more orangey. So right now they're normal, they're a bit more tan. What we want to do is take them towards the oranges. So here we're going to add in the red primary not to the negatives because this will introduce magentas. We're going to go to the positives just a bit, not too much otherwise it will introduce some greens. We want to go just a bit around the 5%, very subtle. Uh, because well we don't want to make very harsh changes right here because in essence we're affecting every single color on the spectrum 
so just a 5%. Then I'm gonna go to the blue primary and this one will affect a lot of the oranges. Why? Because blue is direct opposite to the oranges in the color wheel. So if you go to the negatives, you can see how the blue in the shirt starts to be altered, but also the skin in particular and it starts grabbing that orange and yellowish tone. Obviously, we don't want to do this, otherwise this guy, uh, it looks like he just ran a marathon. We're gonna go sli slightly to the negatives, maybe around the minus 15 or minus 16, and there we have more yellowish skin tones. Next, we're gonna add a bit of red and a bit of blemish and all these little gestures of blood under the skin, and that's gonna be with the green primary. Here, if you go to the positives, as you can see, more red starts to appear in the skin in general. So it's gonna be very subtle as well, around the 5%, you can go higher if you want, depending on your scene. I don't want to make anything too disruptive. So we can click camera calibration on and off to see the before and after, this was before, and now on, and now we have skin tones which are a bit more orangey. This is just looking a lot better. Okay, so now we have the skin tones of Uri Segura. What we're gonna do is copy these settings once again, hit okay, and gonna revert to the previous image. So here we are back in our original image, right click and paste our settings, and now we have our camera calibration settings applied. Okay, next we're gonna go down to HSL. Now in HSL we can basically alter colors in terms of their tone, their saturation, and their luminous or darkness. So we're gonna start off with the hue. And in essence in here, what we want to do is basically alter some of the tones, but mostly in the saturation, we're gonna desaturate most of the tones aside from the warm tones. That's something that he does a lot, making his image very monochromatic. So let's start off with the hue or the tone. First of all, the reds, I'm gonna take them just a bit more towards the oranges, just to complement what we did in camera camera calibration and then the oranges I'm just gonna take them down just a bit more towards the warm tones yellows control a lot of the greens and most of the greens in his images are very dimmed down towards the burnt out or autumn like colors so I'm gonna go to the negatives around the minus 40 is gonna be enough and also the greens gonna take them down around the same lines next we're gonna go to saturation now in saturation we're gonna desaturate all of the tones so be prepared so first of all red orange and purple I'm not gonna touch them particularly because lots of the skin tones are in these ranges. So the less we tamper with them, the less we're gonna affect what we did in camera calibration. So I'm already happy with the skin tones, no need to move them at all. So starting out with the yellows, again, the yellows control all of the greens. So I'm gonna go to the negatives around the minus 40%, which basically desaturate a lot. Then again, minus 40 for the greens, 65 towards uh, the aquas. These ones will control a lot of the sky. Remember that his sky was basically desaturated as well as all the blues were gone in his images. Immediately we can see how the shirt of the model loses all the blues. And then the purple just pulled them down just a bit around the minus 40s. Okay, so we can see the before and after from the, what we did in Nature Cell. It's just making this image a lot more monochromatic, a lot more desaturated. But no worries, we're gonna add in color grading that blue tone and those warmish tones. So now we're gonna go into color grading. And in essence, in color grading, we can basically just assign a color with a hue, with a saturation, and a certain luminance to the shadows, to the midtones, and to the highlights. And we can also use the balance tool over here to determine the threshold of what Lightroom considers to be shadows, and midtones, and highlights. So this is a very complex and very advanced tool. So what we're gonna do is, first of all, in the shadows, add that blue tone. So here we're gonna add some saturation by pulling this circle towards the borders and then rotating to find the color that we want. Now, in this case, I'm gonna go with a dark blue. So we don't want anything too minty for this preset. We're gonna go around and just find something around here. This is, the hue is 225 for those who cannot see and the saturation is way too high. Just gonna bring it down around the 17 to 15%, something around those lines. It's gonna be very subtle. You guys can experiment and go a bit further, a bit more harsh with the saturation, but immediately you can see how the dark parts of the image now have that blue tint that we were looking for. We can select this eye over here to see what we've done. This is before, this is after, now it has that blue tone in the shadows. Next, I'm gonna go to the highlights. Now in the highlights, we're gonna add that warm tone, direct opposite to the blue tones to create that color contrast and that balance in general. So just gonna add some saturation first of all. I think this one is quite nice. In this case, you can see that there's not too much in the highlight range in this image, particularly because, well, we're in the shadows. Lightroom is classifying most of this image as shadows with a small percentage in the highlight range. So what we can do is move the balance tool around to let's say go to the extreme to the plus 100 to tell Lightroom that everything in this image is in the highlights. So that's the color that we were working for. We can also go to the negatives and say everything is in the shadows and therefore we don't have any of the orange tone that we just added. So you need to play around with the balance to get this right. And sometimes it's worth just tweaking just a bit the balance tool to make sure we have the correct combination of colors in our image. 
In this case, I'm gonna go with 37, and the saturation, again, is gonna be around the 15 to 17%. Okay, so right now, we can click Y on our keyboard or Alt-Y to display the comparison vertically, and the image is looking quite nice, fantastic. We can see those blue tones in the shadows, there we are. You can see those crushed shadows as well, those highlights which are dimmed down and now have that warmish tone compared to the original one. So in this image, well, it's quite different from the ones that Uri Segura takes, but I think the color grading is spot on. Let's save this preset and then apply it to different photos to see if we did a good job and if we need to tweak any of the values. So I'm gonna go to the left panel over here under presets, over here, we're gonna select the plus sign, create a preset, and of course here we're gonna name it. And then remember exposure, white balancing and contrast, I don't like to mark them, neither lens corrections because well, these will alter depending on the lens, transform nor effect. So I'm gonna select create and then let's see how this preset performs in other photos before we jump into the little variants of this one. Okay, how about this one? Here we have a beautiful shot of these civilian ladies in the Seville April's Fair. So let's apply the preset to see how it performs. As you can see, I've already added it into the like preset pack V2. And here we have it. Now, as you can see, this image is quite dark. So immediately I'm just gonna correct a bit of the exposure. Notice that these values are at zero. We didn't add them to the preset. Just add a bit more exposure. And here we have this beautiful image of these ladies. You can see the skin tones now. They're a lot more orange, just like Uri Segura likes them. A bit more orange, more like Canon colors. He doesn't shoot with Canon, but here they are. Then we have that blue tone in the shadows, which is very noticeable. And then the highlights are very warm. You can see it, particularly in the dress of the lady, how it was more white over here, and now it's a bit more uh, in the warm tones. So this preset works perfectly in these types of scenarios where this is a photo at sunset, right? So it will work perfectly with these types of colors. How about these of these musicians just outside the Vatican City? Let's apply the preset to see how it performs. And you have to say that in this image in particular, uh, let's apply the preset. In this image in particular, we have a lot of glare because the sun was hitting directly into the lens. So it's looking quite nice. We can see those blue tones in the shadows, looking beautiful, actually. Just look at those. The warm tones, yeah, they're very warm. And you can even see the skin tones, which are a bit more orange. In this case, I would add some dehaze. This is where a tool like dehaze comes in, and you can reduce the glaring in your image by quite a bit and return a bit of the contrast, something like that. And then add a bit more exposure just to compensate and there we have a beautiful image, very punchy and very contrasty with those blue tones in the shadows, desaturation in most of the tones other side from the warm tones, and the bright parts of the image have that warm cast that we added in post edition in the color grading. So it's looking quite nice. Okay, so now let's return to the original image and let's create the warmer, the creamy, as he likes to call it, uh, version for portraits. Now this one, in essence, isn't too hard to make. First of all, we need to go into our editing settings once again. And what we want to do is go to HSL. And firstly, we want to return a bit of the saturation of most tones. For example, we saw in the before and afters in his preset shop that the blues were a bit more present, just a bit more present than in the previous uh, edit. So just gonna return them just a bit. Purples, I'm gonna return them as well around the minus 35s. The greens as well, I'm just gonna return them around the minus 25, just make the desaturation a bit less noticeable, a bit more natural, and also as well the clarity, we don't want any clarity in our portraits because well, it will make the imperfections of the skin really pop. So just leave it like that with texture, present but clarity at zero. And then in color grading here, first of all, we want to erase that blue cast that we have in the shadows. We're gonna double click the center of the color wheel and immediately it's gone. And in the mid tones, we're gonna add a warm cast just to complement the warm tones that we added in the highlights. So in the mid-tones, just gonna play around. In this case, I'm gonna add a bit more of a yellowish tint. So around 51 is gonna be our hue over here, which is this color. And of course, the saturation is way too high. Gonna go around 7%, not too high. Remember not to add a lot of saturation into the mid-tones because normally the skin tones are gonna be in the mid-tones. So we don't want to affect them too much. Just around the 7% of saturation. And there, basically we have this little variant, which I would call the creamy. And this one works perfectly for portraits because we don't have those unnatural blue tones in the shadows. Compared to the original image, as you can see, it's a lot more warm than the original image. And you particularly can see in the shirt over here, which is very yellowish. So we're gonna save this one and see how it performs in some portraits. So I'm gonna select it once again, create preset, and this one I'm gonna name it creamy. Okay, so here I have this portrait and it's a bit of exposed as we can see in the histogram. So I'm just gonna drag the exposure a bit down, just a bit. And now let's apply the presets to see how they differ from each other. So first of all, this is Uri Segura Golden. Immediately we can see that it's very punchy, very contrasty, and the shadows have this blue cast in them. 
It's very, looking very nice. The skin tones also are a bit more yellow. Well, it also varies depending on the skin tones. And now let's see the other one, which is called Creamy. And this is one, and the Creamy one is a lot more warm. In particular, we eliminated that blue tone in the shadows, but we added that warm cast into the midtones as well, just to complement and make this image a lot more useful for portraiture. How about in this one? Let's see how these presets fare with a, a more of a lit environment. So let's apply, first of all, the golden. And there we have, it. actually, it looks fantastic in this image. Look at the skin, how it's a lot more orangey, a lot more reddish. It's just bringing out a lot of life into my skin over here. Then the shadows are a lot more crushed compared to the original one and the highlights are a lot more dimmed down. So this image looks quite nice. Now let's see the creamy, which will essentially just eliminate all the blue cast that we have in the dark parts, and also it's looking quite nice. Obviously, if you were to apply these presets in images shot in the similar manner to Uri Segura and in the similar time, like in Golden Hour, they will look a lot better. Okay, now let's jump into the original image once again, and let's create our third preset, which is the flat base. Okay, so here we are in our original image, and we're gonna use the golden preset as a basis. So I'm just gonna select it and apply it, and we're just gonna alter a couple of things. Now, first of all, this style was a lot more flat. So for that, we need to dive into the basic corrections and bring up the shadows and bring down the highlights a lot more. So first of all, the highlights, I'm gonna dim them down a lot more than in the previous one, just around the minus 70s is gonna be enough. And as you can see, the highlights are a lot more dim compared to the original image. Then the shadows are going to pull them up. Notice how a lot more information is going to start to appear in the dark parts of the image. Just pull it up. Around the plus 90 is going to be enough. Now our image is a lot more flat. Then the highlights and then the whites, I'm just going to leave them like that. And the blacks in this case, I'm going to pull them down just a bit to have a bit more contrast. Minus 11. Next, clarity and texture. In this case, I don't want them at all. Our image is a lot more flat, a lot more soft. Now here in HSL, the first thing that I want to do is change a bit of the greens, make them a lot more burnt out. So we're going to go to the negatives, the greens, to the negatives around the minus 80% is going to be enough. And the yellows will control a lot more of the greens all the way to the minus 100. Then in saturation, in this case, I'm just going to reduce a bit of the desaturation that we did in the original preset. Bring down a bit of the yellows and a bit of the greens. Just make the desaturation a lot less harsh than we did in the previous presets. Yeah, something around these lines. So the image is a lot more natural. Next, in color grading here, we're not gonna have a blue tone in the shadows. Instead, we're gonna have something of a mint color. So I'm gonna go to the shadows, first of all, just scroll around and find that mint color, something around these lines, maybe a bit more green, around there. This is gonna be the tone that we're gonna select. And the saturation, again, is gonna be around the 15 to 17%. And immediately you can see how it's adding this emerald beautiful mint color into the shadows. Then the midtones, we're not gonna have anything. And finally, in the highlights, in this case, we want something a bit more yellow instead of orange. So I'm gonna go to around to the 65%, I think. Let's see the color over here, just up up the saturation. It's a bit more of a yellowish tone, more natural. I'm gonna leave the saturation quite high in this case, around the 40%. And this preset is just looking beautiful. Just look at those green tones and yellow tones. It's just a beautiful sight. These will make perfect and beautiful LUTs for video. So let's save this preset and apply it to other photographs to see how it performs. Okay, so I have this image of these two Athenians just having a chat after work in sunset at Athens. So let's apply the preset. First of all, let's see the golden. Uh, where is golden? Over here. You can see those blue tones really pop up from the shadows. Obviously, if it's not enough for you guys, you can always go down to color grading once again and maybe amp up the saturation just a bit to make it a lot more blue, depending on your needs and the style that you're going for. Then we're gonna add the creamy, which in a sense just reduces those blue tones, and also it's looking fantastic. And let's see how the flat that we just created performs. Oh, and this is looking beautiful. Just look at this preset. Beautiful stuff. How about this portrait that I took in Mykonos? Let's apply the preset. Let's see how the warm tones are affected in this image in particular. First of all, let's see the golden. Yeah, the warm tones are a lot more orange and we have that blue cast in the entire image in the shadows. Notice how the highlights are a lot more dim and a lot less overexposed in the image. It's looking beautiful compared to the original one. Now let's see how the creamy one and the creamy one, the creamy is in essence a lot more warm and it's beautiful for portraits in particular, a bit more natural. And finally, we have the flat one that adds that mint cast into the shadows and it's looking just beautiful. How about this image of this little ensemble that I found in Madrid? So let's apply, first of all, the golden preset over here. And there we have it, it's beautiful. The skin tones are a lot more highlighted, a lot more orange than the original one. We have those blue tones in the shadows and just looking beautiful. This preset is looking beautiful in these types of shots. Then let's apply the creamy 
which adds this warm tone in general to the image, a lot more natural. And finally, let's see the flat one. Ah, oh, and it's looking fantastic, straight out of a cinematic thriller movie. So there we have it guys, three looks based on Ori Segura style. This is just how I would achieve that type of color grading. Maybe I came close, maybe a bit far off with my color grading. You tell me in the comment section down below. But remember that the purpose of these tutorials is for you guys to practice, to use these profiles as an example and to practice and learn color grading. So hopefully you did it side by side with me. And remember that these three presets that we just created are in the Edit Like Preset Pack V2 and also the Edit Like LUT Pack V2 in case you want to support me. You can browse around my shop, I'll link it up here to see my personal presets that I use every single day. Other than that guys, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers to all of you.